Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today we're discussing Space Force, an American comedy web television series created by Greg Daniels and Steve Carell. This is premiering on Netflix on the 29th of 2020. It centers on a group of people tasked with establishing the 6th branch of the United States Armed Forces, the United States Space Force. So, for anybody that is in the dark about, you know, what what the background of Space Force is, it's essentially the creators of The Office coming together, the producers, some of the main uh, heads of it are coming to create, or they have created, the show Space Force. Netflix appears that they dropped uh, a a pretty penny on this show. It's an expensive-looking show, very slick, high-budget, with a pretty stellar cast. But does the story and writing, you know, integrate just as well with all of this high quality media happening right now. Personally, this first episode is not very good. So Greg Daniels, the main creator behind this besides Steve Carell, is a writer, producer, director, best known for The Office. Everyone remembers, you know, Jim Pam, Dwight, all the relatable characters that we had in those uh that series, as well as Parks and Rec. Um, very similar series that was on NBC with uh, the Leslie Nope character, Nick Offerman as Ron Schwartz, and uh, Greg Daniels is also responsible for the new show Upload that is on Amazon Prime. I actually have not seen that yet, but uh, I've heard some pretty decent things about it. Want to check that out? So Greg Daniels has been known for having a pretty strong hand in the pr- uh, producing side of uh, comedy over network television for the past. Uh, 20 years, honestly, Um, even as far back as King of the Hill. So you would expect having Greg Daniels as a creator, writer, producer, director, as well as Steve Carell and his uh, expertise, that this is probably going to be a pretty uh, big of a knockout hit. I mean, we have uh, Steve Carell as uh, the main general, Mark Naird, John Malkovich is in this, we got Ben Schwartz, we got... uh, Diana Silver, she's from uh, Booksmart, <clears throat> debuted in there. Uh, Tawny Newsom, it's Captain Angela, uh, Dedick Badger, sorry, Badder, uh, is, uh, <laughs> Badger, sorry, um, and uh, many other notable faces that are much more of a, a <clears throat> they're much more of a, a, a popping on screen, almost just like a cameo type thing. So, um, what is going on with this first episode? The first episode, four-star General Martin Naird, leader of the newly created Space Force, is pressured to launch a satellite despite dire warnings from scientists. So that scientist mainly being uh, John Malkovich is uh, the dissenting uh, name within the Space Force show. He's the one telling uh, Steve Carell, Maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe this is the way we should do it because this is the way that makes sense. And Steve Carell is essentially playing against type of uh, Michael Scott. If you are familiar with, I don't know how you're not familiar with Michael Scott from The Office. If you are, if you aren't, um, if you are, you already know what I'm talking about. Kind of a ridiculous, bumbling, somewhat racist, homophobic, slash uh, just all around kind of a numbskull. But he has generally uh, pretty good intentions and a decent heart. So um, it seems that he's kind of taking the, that premise of him being kind of a numbskull in, uh, in the office. And he's taking, Steve Carell is taking this character, Mark Naird, and he's trying to really uh, umph him up. I mean, he's just very much, uh, uh, he's trying to present himself as the anti-Michael Scott. So let's break this down real quick. I'm going to discuss the synopsis of this first episode, so expect spoilers for this first episode. Air Force Lieutenant 
General Mark Naird is promoted to four-star general and is hoping to take over as chief of the Air Force. But he is appointed as the first chief of operations of the newest of the newest United States military branch, the U.S. Space Force, which has branched from the Air Force, led by his enemy, General Kick Batston. His family, including his daughter Erin and wife Maggie, are relocated to Wild Horse, Colorado, so that he can work at the new base there. One year later, the Space Force is about to launch a new satellite called Epsilon-6 into orbit. The Space Force is disorganized and fledging. Mark is constantly bombarded by obstacles and adversaries. Aaron detests her new home, and Maggie is now in prison. Against the advice of his advisors and scientists, including Space Force scientists, Dr. Adrian Mallory, uh, John Malkovich's character, Mark orders the launch of Epsilon-6. Despite initial concerns and in front of a delegation of prominent members of Congress, Epsilon-6 successfully reaches an orbit. Re- reaches orbit. Later that night, as Mark and Adrian celebrate, Mark, observing Epsilon-6 through a telescope, sees a massive Chinese satellite clip the solar panels, the satellite's only power source from putting Epsilon-6 in jeopardy. Sorry, putting Epsilon-6 in jeopardy. So, to be honest, that actually, that last scene, I was very unclear about what the hell I was looking at. Um, I It looked like a, a satellite came and, you know, clipped some things off of another satellite, but it, I, I didn't see that it was clear that that was a, a Chinese satellite at all, or that that was the only um, power source. So, I just feel like some of the small details, maybe, maybe I wasn't paying attention, I, that could be me. But I did not feel like that was initially clear off the top. Um, again, so Steve Carell, the character of General Mark Naird, is trying to play the anti-Michael Scott. It almost opens up with lines of dialogue talking about you. Uh, almost, it feels like he's talking to himself, almost like a Mary Sue character, um, to this other character, to this other general, uh, Kate Bast- Babston. And he's talking about, you know, you're a... Uh, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're a womanizer, you're a homophobe, and basically he's describing Michael, the Michael Sky character. It's almost like he's describing himself in the office in this very first scene. Um, and so that's how it kind of kicks off. It's like, all right, so we're trying to very much 2020 eyes, 2020 eyes this, uh, this Space Force show. It kind of feels... Like they're trying to play fast and loose a little bit with the type of jokes they're doing. They're trying to like the type of jokes in this are uh, uh, Steve Carell kind of being suspicious of a Chinese uh, scientist, saying, "Is he, um, you know, is he a Chinese scientist?" And, you know, what's behind your back? Is that, you know, are you carrying a, a samurai sword or something like that? It's like, dude, come on now. It's like, that's not the kind of comedy I'm generally looking for these days. Um, there's also this whole Russian subplot where this uh, his daughter, is in, uh, what I hear, is interested or, uh, or wants to hang out with this Russian guy. And when this Russian guy appears... Um, they, they play the, you know, the, the music in the background. It's, it's just like, oh my gosh, it's, it's almost the equivalent of like hitting the gong every time an Asian person walks in the room. It's like, this is not exactly necessary. So it seems very low brow humor and, and in a way they're trying to like almost poke and prod at the type of humor that they're looking for. Now, granted, Greg Daniels and Steve Carell have have also proven they they can have an entirely mediocre season of a first season of t- television and still come back with 10 more seasons of pretty damn good stuff. So most people know that if you've seen the first season of the the office that yes it is 
uh, a little bit slow moving. I think that the episodes are maybe 40 minutes, which this episode on this was 40 minutes. And what they end up doing in the, the subsequent seasons is they they definitely make it much more of a fast, loose style um, type of show. The pacing is much more faster. Um, the jokes are kind of coming at you, at you a little bit faster. The jokes in this do not land nearly as well as what they would probably would have hoped. I don't know exactly the kind of style of humor I uh, that they're kind of going trying to go for. It's uh, it's since it's this first episode, I'm very much putting my feet in the water, you know, testing it out, trying to f- figure out what exactly um, this show is trying to hit. Is it trying to be like a dramedy? Is it trying to be a full fledged wacky comedy? Um, it's you know we've seen multiple times uh, Steve Carell's characters kind of messing up things already in this first episode, you know, hitting the launch button saying he isn't going to pay for the launch, uh, cover. So it's all, you know, it cutaways and stuff like that of him fucking up and whatnot. The thing is the director, Paul King did a pretty good job with making this look good. Uh, the Paddington two director, as well as, uh, Paddington director. Um, but, I will say this this first episode just left me wanting more. I, I just felt like it was kind of a collection of scenes of um, Steve Carell kind of interacting with these different people. And I'm not really sure what the the full crew is. Like <clears throat> like the uh the John Malkovich characters obviously were reoccurring for absolutely no reason. His wife is in jail and we get no explanation. It's kind of just like left up for, you know, grabs, I guess. We're supposed to be like, ooh, I wonder why she's in jail. Um, I, that's not nearly as um, interesting as I think they think it's trying to be. Ben Schwartz, uh, you know, you know, laying out contemporary uh, comedy in this. I have mixed feelings about Ben Schwartz just because I, I feel like he just did okay in Sonic, and it's not really his fault, mostly. just It just sounds like Ben Schwartz's voice. But anyways... Um, let me see what else we got. Anything else? Yeah, we have a, a, a strong list of uh, uh, lined up of comedians that are actually within the entire cast. But, um, you know, Fred Willard, you know, R.I.P., I think he actually just died. Um, yeah, he died on the 15th of May. R.I.P. Uh, Patrick Warbert, Warburton, if you remember him, he's he kind of talks like this. And he's on a... But that was a horrible uh, uh, Warburn uh, impression. He's like, uh, he's the guy in the wheelchair voice on Family Guy, I believe. Um, yeah, and like Jane Lynch, she's in this as well. Lisa Kudrow, she's in it. But more like cameos. Like I, the thing is, what made The Office great, and I'm, I, I wonder if they were trying to re- replicate this in some sort of way. But essentially. My opinion was the relatability. Everyone could relate to the different things, the different types of character traits and people that were all within the office, and they all were able to kind of bounce off each other with this really dry humor. Um, This is Steve Carell kind of bouncing from room to room, uh, you know, announcing, kind of commanding the room in a way, but nobody's really taking him seriously, so it's like... And the thing is, it's the the jokes are not hitting nearly as well because of the relatability factor, in in many ways, in many aspects. We just don't have that office environment where we're like, oh yeah, that's such a Stanley, or oh yeah, that's such a Toby, uh, Toby move. But anyways, um, yeah, this first episode was rough. I'm definitely gonna watch a few more episodes just to kind of get into it, see what the rhythm is. Maybe it'll get better. Maybe they. I just didn't know what this first episode was going to be. Um, but yeah, with the writers, Steve Carell, Greg Daniels, we have Maxwell the- Theodore Vivian, Connor Hines, Asha Laisha Bullock, Yael Green, Owen Daniels, which must be the son of uh, Greg Daniels, is my probably. Um, yeah. The thing is, there's a lot of people writing on this. I'm not sure if this has a, a full-fledged direction, and that's what I think we need to have. Like, why should I care about this? I, I There's so much really good television on right now and good movies and stuff, just always processing. Um, 
on all these, you know, we got HBO Max, we got the, the Amazon Prime. There's always new stuff coming. So if stuff is only mediocre, it's hard to say you want to recommend it. So um, maybe check out the first one or two episodes, see if you are into it, this style. But I've talked to people and I'm, I've listened to a couple podcasts and people are saying that generally this is really not that great. And I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe they just need a punch up rider. Get the 21 Jump Street guys in. That's, that's, those are my go to guys when I think of comedy. So, um, I don't know. I need some smart, witty comedy that has a, maybe a little bit of satire in it. I, I don't know. I feel like it just needs to swing for the fences a little bit because Steve Corral is going Aruba, Jamaica at the end of this is just not cutting it for me. It just feels like Steve Corral is just holding himself in from what actually his character is. I feel like I don't know exactly the personality of Steve Corral's character and I, and we're with him the entire time. Um, but, uh, you know, he's trying to be a father. He's trying to be a general. He's trying to be a leader and, uh, I guess a boss and he just kind of has to let loose in some sort of sense and the office character of uh you know Steve Carell's Michael Scott um he was always cutting loose I mean he was he was I I thought that the Aruba Jamaica song was coming straight from the uh the office uh I, I don't know season like three or something like that because I'm pretty sure he does like a there's like an episode about him going to Jamaica um but yeah I honestly I wanted some sort of twist in this. I felt like the Chinese uh, satellite coming and dismantling the Epsilon 6 was not that interesting. I almost really wanted like to have some sort of big twist about uh, uh, Steve Carell's character. Like he's like secretly really evil or something like that. I don't know. There, there wasn't anything that really latched, you know, hooked me in. I was like, ooh, this is, this is that good. This is, this is definitely what is making me want to check out the next episode. So... Um, I'm just going to continue going down it. I'll probably not do an episode by episode. It's a little bit too much for me to do at this moment. Too busy. Um, but, uh, thank you for listening, watching Lucky Doll Podcast. If you want to find out more, uh, Space Force reviews, um, we'll probably have a season finale, uh, roundup review of what we thought about the full season. If I make it through, I'll, I'll, I'll keep y'all posted in the aftercast if I'm really feeling it. Um, there's been a lot going on behind the scenes, so... Yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed this uh, Lucky Dog podcast review of Space Force. Um, I don't think it's a total dud. It's it's just got it looks amazing, but uh, the writing is not great and uh, it's boring in some parts. I'm I'll be honest. I'm I'm just was not that interested in the majority of it. So um, I'm just gonna have to plow through a couple episodes to see what's really going on. But anyways. Um, Yes, thank you for listening, watching Look It Up Podcast. Check out the rest of the reviews on SoundCloud. You can get all the reviews early on YouTube. Subscribe there, thumbs up if you want to keep us uh, high in the rankings. Um, if you want to um, donate, go to paypal.me slash the Look It Up Podcast for all donations. Um, join us on the Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Discord. We got all of the different social media apps that are popular that we uh try to keep updated as much as possible so um let me know what you thought about this review how i can improve thank you and take it easy